Hello, well, gang. I'm Carolina Jackpot Time coming at you. It is officially November. It's November 1st, 2022. It's actually, college football coming on tonight. A little bit of matching. Uh, Ball State and somebody and Buffalo and Ohio. So, looking forward to that. It's time of year. It's college football almost every night of the week. It's a great thing. Uh, with this past Saturday night's game and this coming Saturday night's game. Wanted to talk about Gamecocks for a little bit. I haven't really felt too much like talking about them. Um, you know, I was, uh, at one point in time, I did a Sunday recap uh, just about every week uh, on our team and uh, what I saw the night before. And honestly, in those videos, I pretty much said the same things every week. You know, it was like, it was the same old problems every week uh, that uh, had Snake bitten the team uh, from the uh, day before when uh, on the one the games that we would lose, which is more often than not. Um, and then once again, here we are staring at uh, another giant L that we held this past Saturday against the Mizzou Tigers. Um, and this, going into the season, this was a must-win game uh, for Carolina Jackpot. It was a must-win game, in my opinion. When I looked at the schedule, uh, just broke it down uh, versus who you who you want to beat, uh, who you'd like to beat, who you aspire to beat, and who you got to beat. Uh, this is one of the got to have games. Now, uh, I don't think that going into the season, anybody thought that South Carolina really stood a real legitimate shot of beating Texas A&M, uh, and we did do that. And you can tell me all day long. Uh, you know, I mean, they're, they're not a good team. Yes, I know, they're not a good team. Uh, neither are we. So, I mean, that was two bad teams uh, duking it out, and we won that one. Um, so, I think that South Carolina, if, um, you know, if you can gain bowl eligibility this Saturday, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess you've, I guess you've met the goals. You know, I guess you've met the goals. They're not my goals. You know, that's not the goals I have. I wanted to see this team competing for uh, the SEC East, right? I want to see this team competing with the Georgias of the world and uh, and and going back to Atlanta. But I don't know. I I, I just I, I really seriously um, question at this point. Um, a whole lot of the coaching, obviously, uh, a lot of the play calling, a lot of the decision making, and and just just quite frankly, I mean, really, what the hell we're doing? Um, I, I don't know why decisions are made, you know, why people are allowed to, to keep their jobs or not keep their jobs. Uh, you know, a lot of that has uh, you know has monetary implications, obviously, and, and that's that's attached to it and. Uh, uh, a reason for a lot of that, but uh, you saw on Saturday the uh, offensive output from South Carolina. Uh, in fact, there was no offensive output. I mean, it was absolutely horrible. 205 yards, I think it was, for the entire game. Uh, you know, couldn't run the ball. Oh, Carolina jackpot, Marshawn Lloyd got hurt. Okay. Well, you know, you got a guy that rushed for a thousand yards for Wake Forest that's back there in your backfield too. Couldn't do anything. Um, this, you know, I the Spencer Rattler thing. Uh, you know, I was all excited when this guy got here. You know, he, he comes with a good, comes with a great name, comes with uh, you know, you know, a, a lot of accolades. Great high school player, extremely highly recruited player. Uh, had a great season in 2020. Had a not so great season in 2021, and lost his job. Came here to redeem himself. You know, I thought that that was going to be. Hey, man, we're we're on to something here. This this is we're we're, we're cooking with gas now. Well, now well, not so much. Um, it's just not the guys. It's not that good. And he's just not that good. He's mid. He's average as hell. Below average as hell. Below average. 
why is it every time that he throw? why is it every time that he throws a pass to Juice Wells, why is it that Juice Wells has to climb the ladder and leave his feet to go up and catch the pass? I mean, is that designed that way? Why is that? I don't want, I, everybody, well, Carolina Jackpot, he throws a beautiful ball. Okay, well, that's great. I mean, I can throw a beautiful ball in the backyard. It doesn't mean that I'm a good quarterback. I, there's something wrong uh, with that entire offensive side of the football for South Carolina. The entire offensive side of the football, something is wrong. Uh, is, it, uh, is it Marcus Satterfield? I don't know. I mean, or is, or is, he, the, or is he just really the scapegoat? Uh, and there's some more underlying issues there. Uh, I'm not really sure, but I mean, I don't know how you can justify keeping this guy around um, when, I mean, you have recruits, you, you've got guys that are locked in and committed. You've got people, you've got, surely got people that are looking the other way now. you got people that are definitely, you've got these kids probably looking the other way. Um, just, I mean, who wants to play in that? I mean, it's not a fun offense to watch. I mean, this is the this is the era of college football. This is the era of offense. It's the era of offense, and it's almost like defense. And and in, re, in regards to it, winning games at a, at a high level, it's almost like defense is just going the way of the dinosaur. I mean, look at Tennessee. I mean, look at ten, look at that. Number one offense in the country. <clears throat> um, like number 100 defense in the country. Those numbers may have went up after Saturday's great performance uh, against Kentucky. Team with a terrible offense. Get to that in just a minute. Um, but, but, I mean, hasn't played defense all year. Hadn't heard of any. Hadn't heard of any. Uh, if you can continue to... Uh, if you continue to keep the ball uh, and uh, you know score every time you get it, I mean, odds are if, you know the other team's not going to score on you every time they get the ball. So I mean, it sounds simple, but I mean that's working so far. It's working so far for them. Um, but Kentucky, we saw yesterday, Mark Stoops. Uh, has uh, let go of his offensive coordinator. I don't even know what his name was. He wasn't even there an entire year. So in 2021, they had Liam Cohen, a uh, guy that uh, was, uh, you know, an assistant uh, in the NFL, who came and uh, ran the offense. They did a pretty good job. Um, this year, um, he had another guy there running the thing uh, that also had some NFL ties. Didn't do a real great job. So guess what? After they put up six points, they put up a six-burger against Tennessee. What does Mark Stoops do? He fires his ass. Marcus Satterfield has been um, having abysmal offensive performances since he got to South Carolina, since he got here. And we still continue uh, to, to trudge down this same old avenue and it's tired uh it's tiring excuse me to watch um it's 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 almost where you, you i mean you can't you can't watch a team and you can't get excited for anything other than knowing that we might take a kickback for a touchdown or we might block a punt and score a touchdown off of it yeah no offensive creativity you know i would have thought that by this point in the season we would, have th we would have seen at least, you know, two or three, at least 40-yard-plus touchdown passes, Spencer Rattler uh, to one of these receivers. Hadn't happened. Hadn't happened. Um, you know, and I've been impressed with some of the receivers so far. Um, you know, Austin Stogner uh, played a good game, I thought, on Saturday and played a decent game the week before. Uh, if I go back and look at it, Spencer Rattler. Well, he, 
Carolina jackpot. They got to they got to catch the balls he throws to them. Well, you know, you know, some of that I think is on the quarterback too. Some of it's on the quarterback too. You know, you're, it, it, they feed off your energy. I just, uh, you, know, I, you know, no, um, no, no, not any game plan whatsoever developed for the backup quarterback, Luke Doty. Now, this guy's been sitting on the bench all year. Uh, I think he's seen action maybe twice. Maybe twice. I've seen him get into a game. Um, I mean, the guy has talent. Well, Carolina Jackpot, he's not as good as Spencer Rattler. I get that in the comment section all the time, too. Yeah, I understand that. I understand that. He doesn't have the he doesn't have the skill set Spencer Rattler has. Um, but maybe, you know, you, you can't measure, measure the mental prowess uh, that he has uh, to lead your team. Um, yeah, maybe there's something to that. Maybe there's, uh, well, maybe at least putting him in there for a series or two provide a spark. Something. Something. There is no reason on God's green earth that this team, with all the talent that they have on it, and, and I'm not saying it's a talent-laden team. It's not a talent-laden team. Uh, you know, the, on the defensive side of the ball, South Carolina has way less talent defensively than what they have offensively. They just do. Uh, but the defense as a whole plays better than the offense. Now, Saturday afternoon, I wasn't exactly impressed with them either, uh, and I kind of got into a little spar with my podcast partner, Rob Sanders, over on the uh, Rob and Kel show Sunday night, and uh, he, he, he praised the Gamecock defense. I didn't praise uh, the Gamecock defense. Um, you know, too many chunk plays given up um, to the same wide receiver, too, uh, too much, uh, too many yardage, uh, gained by uh, quarterback Brady Cook for uh, Mizzou, who is probably, you know, in the bottom three uh, as far as skill set and quarterbacks uh, in the SEC. Guy's terrible. Uh, and you made him go out there. And, and, and South Carolina has a, has a tendency to do that. They make bad quarterbacks look good. You'll, you'll see them do that. Um, you know, more often than not, you'll see us do that. So, uh, this defense, I mean, I, I, I think that you know, going into 2021, everyone thought it was going to be absolutely horrible. Well, it was absolutely horrible. It was mediocre. Um, so, uh, you know, all of a sudden we think that, you know, we're working miracles and we've got a really good defense. You don't have a really good defense. You know, you can't stop the run. And, uh, you know, Rob likes to talk about linebackers. We don't have any line. Well, we don't. Uh, but your defensive line, that's your first line of defense right there. You know, why are you not able to get off of a block and uh, and stuff the run at the line of scrimmage? You never stuff the run at the line of scrimmage, or it's very rare. And uh, I, for one, am sick of seeing it. I really am. Um, you, know, I, you know, I'm sick of sick of waiting waiting for the next game, waiting till next year, waiting to. Waiting for this, waiting for the right coach, waiting until we get this next class in here, you know, waiting until this, this quarterback savior comes around to do something. I mean, dude, it's been uh, since 2013 uh, when this team was actually relevant uh, on a national landscape. Well, I take that back. Maybe you were relevant a, a week into the 2014 season until you got blown out uh, by Texas A&M. And then ever since then, things have been going downhill. And uh, people ask me a lot uh, on here, why, why do you have such hatred for Tennessee? Why do you not like Tennessee? Why not? And, well, I mean, it, it's, it's a little bit it's a hatred. It's a lot more of just jealousy, uh, not so much in the fact of just being jealous of that, of the Tennessee program itself, of just being jealous, I guess, of a program who uh, was uh, the absolute shits for quite a while and now has uh, elevated their game uh, in the past uh, several years uh, on an upward trajectory. And even Tennessee, even uh, under Jeremy Pruitt, was starting to elevate their game a little bit uh, from what it had been. I mean, I think that Jeremy Pruitt uh, of 2019, I think, was much better than the uh, Butch Jones that we saw in 2017. 
at Tennessee or maybe even 2016. I mean, they were elevating their game. You know, the, the 2020 year uh, was, was kind of crazy for everybody. Uh, they finished up with a bad record. But there were a lot of teams there that finished up with bad records. They normally finish up with good records. And hell, Indiana went like, what, 8-1 and one the COVID year or something. Northwestern played for the Big Ten Championship the COVID year. It That one, it was just, it's just, the more and more you look at it, the more and more it was just a throwaway. It was a throwaway. It was a, it was a, a, a farce and, and the... the the results there were indicative of what you would normally see, but I, that team's been on an upward trajectory for a while, and um, you know, there's no reason why South Carolina was was well above their level uh, nine, ten years ago, and then you just suddenly everything's just you know, kind of went one way and then the other, and and it's just sickening to me, and uh, I I'm never going to stop being aggravated about that uh, and, and it's the same way with Kentucky it's the same way with Kentucky and I guess I don't have quite the uh, the ire for them uh, as I do for uh, Tennessee and a lot of that just has to do with the fans I, to be honest with you I mean th th these people are uh, you know, I know there are some good Tennessee fans out there and some great ones and really nice people that support the show and I appreciate it. there are some that are just uh, just absolutely ridiculous just absolutely ridiculous. So uh, that's that's a little bit of the backstory with that. But you know, South Carolina obviously offense is horrible, and defense I really don't think is a whole lot better. Um, and you know, we've got some tough times ahead. And this Saturday uh, in Nashville, uh, Carolina Jack Plant actually going to go to this game. And I wouldn't be going to this game if I hadn't already purchased tickets for it uh, two months ago. Yeah, if, if not for that, then I would not be attending this. You can bet your bottom dollar. I wouldn't be. Because um, it's a long trip. It's going to be a fun trip. Uh, going with my son. But at, at the same time, you know, we would have we would have done something different early in the season had I known how this was going to be. Uh, but this is your last shot um, Saturday at bowl eligibility. This is your – it's your absolute last – it's your. It's not your last shot, but it is your. Um, it's your only chance. I'm gonna put it that way at bowl eligibility. Cause you got three games coming up after that. You're not beating Tennessee. Okay, you, you're you're just not. Um, now they'll come off of what? They'll come off of a game against Missouri where uh, I think they think they're gonna win by a hundred, and they may. Um, they also may come out there. I, I think they're going to lose Saturday to Georgia, uh, and I think they're probably going to lose by double digits. Uh, and that's not me being a Tennessee hater or me. Um, I don't know why I turned that light off there. Me being a Tennessee hater, me being delusional, uh, or, or you know, me being a uh, Georgia apologist or any of that. It's just a simple fact that um, I think it's a more complete team and yes, I did allude earlier in the video to the fact that you uh, that offense is is going uh, is, it seems to be the thing now that uh, wins these games for these teams, and defense is going away. Well, still yet though, at this time, you know they're going to be able to stop you. You're not you're not going to score on every drive on Georgia like you've been doing on these other teams. Um, it, it's going to be a rough environment for you. Um, I think I look for him and Hooker to probably have his worst game of the season uh, just because he's going to be under duress. And uh, you know, a lot of that's going to come from crowd noise. A lot of that's going to come from uh, just the fact that Georgia's going to be, I think, in my opinion, the best team you've played so far this season. And guess what? It, it ain't Alabama. It ain't Alabama. Alabama's not uh, – and I'm not going to sit here too. I got an Alabama fan got upset on there the other week because I said they were uh, they they weren't a good team. You're not a good Alabama team, okay? Alabama is at another level. You're at another a higher standard than everyone else is, except for maybe those couple leagues in college football. And to me, you're not a normal Alabama team. That's from what I've seen. How many times the second year he's gotten torched? 
Uh, I don't think the offensive line is what it normally is. So, you know, it, I don't take offense at it because uh, I think your fan base feels the same way as well. Um, so you're not beating them. You're, I mean, you're just not. Um, the game against Clemson, and, and this is another one where, you know, oh, it's, it's, we had people before, like before this Missouri game, talking. I think South Carolina is going to upset them this year. I think they're going to upset them this year. What I mean, what really had? I mean, what put you uh, in the camp of thinking that? I mean, Clemson. I mean, th this team is not. They're not the elite level anymore either. They're not the elite level anymore either. Uh, much as their fans want to think that they are, uh, want you know. And, and, and more about them lately, and I can't stand them either. Um, but I've gotten more to where I can't stand Tennessee uh, than I have them. I put out a tweet that kind of went, went viral for a Carolina jackpot tweet. Uh, I don't know. It's got like 200 likes on it, uh, which is crazy, where I said something uh, Saturday evening. I said, is it wrong for me to want to uh, quit watching football and slam my head into things or, or throw things? That's like I said. Every time I see Tennessee score a touchdown, man, it just makes me sick. Um, but with, and it, it, and at one time, it was the same way with Clemson. Um, I mean, but you're not going to beat them, uh, especially in their house. Uh, you, you know, you can't stop the run, and uh, you'll do what you normally do uh, against a team with a, a good running offense, and that's just dribble down to both of those hind legs. Uh, just are. I mean, that the, the ship foot guy uh, who I wide regard as the second best running back in the state will probably look like the best running back in the state against us again uh, that night. So uh, I, I don't, you know, I don't see you being over there. And then you're not going to, obviously you're not going to move the ball on them. Uh, their defense, while it has some cracks in it, uh, and while we have seen some teams like a Wake Forest, even like a Florida State to some degree, uh, and, and like an NC State for a few plays, uh, like a Syracuse for just a little bit. I mean, be able to move the ball and score a little. You're not going to uh, because you, you because you're not going to come up with anything uh, creative. You're not going to uh, you know change up any game plan at the mid game uh, to be able to uh, you know, develop something that's going to work uh, against that defense. It's not. Now, I mean, you kind of surprised me several years ago when South Carolina went up there and put 35 points on like 500 and something yards uh, of offense up against them uh, after having a horrible offense for a lot of that year as well. So anything is possible, but with this much, uh, I, I just don't see it at the time. I think South Carolina, I think Brian McClendon was the offensive coordinator at the time, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe have been Kurt Roper, but uh, you know I definitely think Kurt, as far as terrible the offensive coordinator as Kurt Roper was, uh, I think that he was definitely uh, heads and shoulders above Marcus Satterfield. But so uh, you're not going to go up there and, uh, and be able to. And that defense was probably better than the one that you know on paper when they were going into the season. That 2018 Clemson defense was not as good as the 2022 one. Everybody thought this version was going to be the best thing uh, since uh, the wheel was invented, and it's not. Um, but South Carolina is not going to be able to win. You're not going to win that one. And then you look at the Florida game, and, and several weeks ago, everyone thought that this was kind of a toss up. Um, and, and even on uh, his, his videos, uh, the much cherished Uncle Alou. Uh, still says that he thinks this one's a toss-up uh, for Florida. I think that comes a little bit more, though, from uh, from kind of making fun of Florida and throwing jabs out. So, so you're not beating Florida on the road. I mean, just look at their games against UGA. Uh, look at their game against Tennessee uh, for much of I mean, at least, at, they were at least competitive. They were at least competitive. Uh, they were able to move the ball to some degree. Uh, it just wasn't enough. I mean, they were able to sustain it. Um, but against a team like South Carolina, I mean, at least enabled, they were at least able to beat Missouri. Um, yeah, Mizzou scored on, I think, a pick six in that game. So, I mean, you take that away, I mean, they did absolutely nothing. 
uh, against Florida. They didn't get all those stupid chunk yardage plays like they got against you. They just controlled the game. Mizzou controlled the entire game against South Carolina from start to finish at home with a sold out crowd. A week after you knocked off a team that you have never beaten before. How pathetic is that? How pathetic is that? And I don't care what mode that victory over Texas A&M came in. You know, I don't care about the fact that, yes, you gave up 17 points unanswered and, and let them get back in the ball game um, after you had jumped out ahead of them. You still did what you had to do to win the game. Uh, and, you know, I, I can't believe that you went out there and, and put up that kind of performance. I guess a Mizzou team that's, I think is a little bit better than people gave credit for, but certainly not a juggernaut, and certainly not a team that's really gonna compete for the upper level of the SEC East. So, uh, really sickening, and then we, you know, you're not, you're not beating Florida on the road, period. So there's three L's right there. Uh, this is your only chance, and don't think uh, don't think that Vanderbilt doesn't have this thing circled on their calendar. You know, don't think that they're not wanting to come in there and are not wanting you to come in there and uh, get punched in the mouth because that's exactly what they're planning on doing. And uh, this is not a good team either. This is a team that gave up 55 points to Alabama and managed to put up three. It's a team that put up 45 points against Georgia and uh, managed to score zero. But uh, you know, against the Missouri. Uh, they were able to come back in that game down 17-0. Uh, they were actually able to come back and make it a tight competitive 17-14 and uh, dang near uh, were able to uh, get a drive going to uh, go down and win that ball game. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, uh, kind of, uh, you know, jumped all over Ole Miss early too. Uh, and Ole Miss, Ole Miss a good team? Probably, I mean, are they a really good team? No, not a really good team. Um, not as good as they have been in the couple, past couple years, uh, but they're decent, uh, better than us. Uh, and Vanderbilt uh, led them at halftime. Uh, you know, you know, Lane Kiffin was probably kind of sweating in his pockets a little bit on that one. Uh, but then they, uh, they did what they do, which is score points and uh, run the ball. Uh, two things that we can't do, and uh, came back and, and won that game pretty easily. Um, so this one, I'm, I would be remiss if I sat here and told you this one doesn't scare the absolute hell out of Carolina Jackpot. Yeah, I mean, haven't beaten this team or haven't lost to them since 2008. Um, ha have not uh, lost at Nashville in, uh, in God knows when. Uh, it's... it's uh, to me, uh, you know, a team, you're a, a, a team that's hungry, uh, coming off of a bye week, uh, and you are a team that's deflated, uh, that just played your worst game of the season, coming, uh, coming off of that, going on the road, night game, don't look like a great situation to me, doesn't set up well situationally for the Gamecocks, but we'll see, that's, that's why we still... Week after week, year after year, you know, decade after decade, continue to pull uh, for teams that you know just don't give us back what we uh, put into them, I guess. So, anyway, that's my thoughts on that. Enough of my rambling. Been doing it for almost half an hour now. I'll see you guys later uh, in the week. Live show coming up tomorrow night. Appreciate it, guys. Peace. I'm out of here. Go Gamecock still. Go Coach Beamer. Dude, learn how to make the right decisions, please. Please learn how to make the right decisions. Be a big boy head coach, okay? You, you, got, you, you got a big boy heart. Uh, you got, um, you know, a, a, a big boy um, love for the school and passion for your job. Now just, you know, just develop a big boy mentality and, and do the right things that you make the tough decisions. See y'all later. Preach, peace, and I'm out. Ah, 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 woo!